Hi, I'm Mike Anderson. I'm the historian and founding member of the Friends of Warren Ballpark in Bisbee, Arizona, and member of the Bisbee Black Sox vintage baseball team. Hi, I'm Tom Reardon. I'm here from, I live here in Sierra Vista, and I work with uh, Mike and the team to, to promote the baseball tournament. And we're here today to talk to you about uh, the upcoming tournament, April 16th and 17th at Warren Ballpark in Bisbee, Arizona. This is going to be, what year is this, the fifth year? It's the seventh. Seventh year. Seventh year. Seventh year, yes. We're going to have, it's going to be great. You'll see not only great vintage baseball, but you're also going to have a chance to meet and talk to Major League player Mudcat Grant, who will be here as, uh, as part of the, the festivities. Mudcat played in the big leagues for about 14 years. Yep. And I, I knew him when he played for the Cleveland Indians, and he came to Washington, D.C. in the late 50s and beat the Senators every, every time he started. And Mudcat was also, for uh, all the youngsters out there that aren't uh, old enough to remember baseball history going back to the 1960s, won games three and six of the 1965 World Series uh, playing for the Minnesota Twins against the Los Angeles Dodgers. So he's got quite a... Um, quite a sterling pedigree behind him as a ball player, and he's just an all-around great guy. And he'll be there to sign autographs, to talk to people, get photographs taken with him, impart pearls of wisdom. He's also uh, done very well as a blues musician, and he tells us he made more more money playing music than he did baseball. You know, that's absolutely right, Tom. Uh, after he retired from professional baseball in the early 70s, Mudcat went on the road with a uh, traveling soul and rhythm and blues review called Mudcat and His Kittens. And it was uh, half a dozen strikingly beautiful young ladies that uh, toured all over the United States, appeared on uh, nation national television. I know they were on uh, Car Johnny Carson show, Tonight Show, and some other late night shows. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, he did, he did pretty well for himself after he left baseball. He's an incredibly intelligent, talented man. Yes, I, I recall seeing him on, uh, on YouTube several years ago when uh former Minnesota Twins Hall of Famer Harmon Killebrew passed away. Right. There was a memorial service in, in the Twins ballpark. And uh, Harmon, I, I think, had, and Mudcat became very good friends. Right. And uh, I think he'd asked Mudcat to, to sing a song at his memorial, and he did. And you can watch the audience. It wasn't a dry eye in the house. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Wonderful. I'm sure. Yes. It's a wonderful world. What a wonderful world. Yes, yes yeah. it is. And he believes that, too. Yeah. Shall we tell him a little bit about what's going to be happening on April 16th and 17th? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, our tournament, which is held at Warren Ballpark in Bisbee, is, and, and that's, by the way, the oldest ballpark in the United States. It's the oldest multi-sport facility in the United States because it's used for both football and baseball. Um, our vintage baseball tournament will be held uh, starting about 9 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock or 5.30 at night, both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we are going to be playing baseball as the way it was played when Abraham Lincoln was running for president. It's 1860 rules baseball. You heard that right. Uh, it's baseball played without a glove, with old uniforms, old terminology, and old bats and, and other equipment. So this is very similar to the modern game in that the base paths are 90 feet. It's um, three strikes, you're out, three outs per inning. And the big difference is that the ball, and here's a modern Major League Baseball. Here is an 1870 lemon peel baseball. The ball is slightly larger, slightly softer, although I'm going to let Tom do the, do the, the test and see. Uh, that, that, is that vintage baseball still pretty hard? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it'll sting when you catch a line drive yeah. or, or a fly ball uh, hit deep into the outfield. So um, what's amazing about this is you're going to see people making plays that modern baseball players make with enormous baseball gloves, but they're doing it with their bare hands. Um, our team, the home team, the Bisbee Black Sox, will be playing there, and we take our name from the 1919 Chicago White Sox who... Um, through the World Series that year um, to make a lot of money for gamblers and to make money for themselves. Eight of them were banned from baseball. Three of them came out and played in a league in southeast Arizona and southwest New Mexico. And the league was called the Copper League, originally the Frontier League, and it consisted of uh, several outlaw players. This year we're going to be honoring at our, ball, at our baseball tournament two uh, men who had an extremely important role in sports in Arizona. One of them is a fellow named John Button Salmon, 
who was a Bisbee boy, graduated in 1921, was a star athlete in both track, or in track, excuse me, ba uh, baseball, football, and basketball. Went on to the University of Arizona, was student body president in 1926, and quarterback for the Wildcats. When he was injured in a traffic accident, had his spine damaged, he was paralyzed from the chest down, and as he lay dying in the hospital in Tucson, his football coach asked him if he had any messages for the team, and he said, tell the team, tell them to bear down. So over a period of time, John Button Salmon has gone from being a Bisbee High School star athlete and University of Arizona uh, star student athlete to an icon. He is now legend. His, his expression, bear down, has become the expression of um, the University of Arizona, and his story still uh, serves to inspire uh, University of Arizona athletes and fans all over Arizona and the world. So we're going to be honoring him. We're also going to be honoring a legendary ball player who has um, a different history. His name is Hal Chase, and he was, as Babe Ruth called him, the greatest defensive first baseman he ever saw play. So if the Bambino says you're that good, you've got to be a pretty good ball player. He had a 15-year career in uh, Major League Baseball playing for the Yankees, for the White Sox, for the Cincinnati Reds, and um, for the New York Giants, as well as for the Buffalo Blues of the Federal League. But he ticked off a lot of Major League owners and uh, the Major League Commissioner and League Commissioners in that he insisted on jumping teams. So he violated that uh, reserve clause that was used to control players, keep them on, a, on one team at the whim of the owners until the 1970s. So Hal Chase came to Arizona in the 1920s and played and managed a team called the Douglas Blues in Douglas. He appeared at Warren Ballpark on numerous occasions, and we've just found out recently that he signed Button Salmon from Bisbee, Arizona to play on his outlaw team in the summer of 1926. So the icon of the University of Arizona, the, the gallant youth who on his deathbed told his team to bear down, was also an outlaw professional player during his last summer at the University of Arizona. So there's always more to history than meets the eye. In this case, we're going to let the world know about this rich and incredible baseball history and tradition that took place at Warren Ballpark and history is still being made there today. So we're hoping that we get folks from all over Arizona um, and we especially want people to come down from Fort Huachuca and Sierra Vista because um, Sierra Vista and Fort Huachuca and Bisbee and Warren Ballpark have a very, very close relationship. Teams from Fort Huachuca, from Camp Harry J. Jones in uh, Douglas and Camp Stephen D. Little and Camp Naco came and played at Warren Ballpark on a regular basis. Uh, we know that um, there is this rich tradition and history and connection between um, the different communities that, that uh, came through their athletic programs and for that reason and also because there's going to be a lot of fun, there's going to be a lot of good food, there's going to be ice cold draft beer from mm -hmm. Beast Brewing, there's going to be an opportunity to meet the University of Arizona Athletic Director Greg Byrne will be down there from Tucson to meet Mudcat Grant to watch some fantastic baseball uh, over uh, the two-day period. And information on how much it costs and what you can expect to see and do during the day can be seen on our website, which is www.friendsofwarrenballpark.com, or you can go to our Facebook page and also look at it. Great. Sounds like it's going to, it'll be an exciting time. Well, you've been there every year. Yes, you're, you're part of this outfit. Um, <laughs> have you ever been bored? Never. No, me neither. Never. Never. Now, I'm 62 years old. I still play the game, and uh, I'm not as fast as I used to be, but I can still get around those 90-foot uh, base paths. We have people on our team from early 20s um, up until about age 70, and we have it's a co-educational sport, so one of our best players is a former fast pitch college um, softball player. Her name uh, is Lily, and Lily Hammer is what we call her. Uh, <laughs> we, we, so this is a sport that um, you can play up into later ages. It's not as demanding as modern baseball. There's no sliding. There's no tagging up. Um, so there's less contact involved. Uh, there's also um, the ball is a little bit softer. 
Um, you can catch the ball on one bounce and it's an out instead of uh, having to catch it on the fly. Um, so that the rules are a little bit different. We explain the rules and, and make sure that people understand them before they watch it so that they've got a good chance um, or a good opportunity to be able to appreciate the game as it's played. And Mike, you've written a book about Warren Ballpark. Could you tell us about that a little bit? I'd be happy to do that. As a matter of fact, I brought a copy of it today. It's titled Warren Ballpark. What a shot. And it tells the story of this historic ballpark. It actually tells the story of baseball in Cochise County going back to its very earliest days. But it, it focuses specifically on Warren Ballpark and its influence in minor league baseball, in town baseball, in high school baseball, um, and in football. What's interesting about Warren Ballpark, not just the fact that we've had so many great baseball games played there, but that Bisbee and Douglas have the second longest running high school football rivalry in the country. And for those folks who are watching this from Arizona, think about the U of A and ASU getting together for a football game or a basketball game. That's the same kind of intensity that you have between the fans and between the players for that Bisbee Douglas copper pick game. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, little old ladies used to fight underneath the stands. We don't see that happening anymore, but we sure do see a lot of passion Bisbee on a Friday night is, is uh, still great, a great football town in the fall. So there's football, there's baseball. The high school team is the second uh, uh, team in the state in, in uh, Arizona Interscholastic Association rankings in Class 2A right now. Bisbee makes the playoffs on a regular basis. They won the state championship five times. So out of, a, out of a student body of about 320 kids, they have 35 boys come out mm -hmm. for the baseball team. That's how serious we take our baseball in Bisbee. This is a great book. I know I wrote it. I'm not going to be modest about it. It's got great reviews. It's full of photos, great photos, historic photos. You want to buy this book. And you want to buy a, a copy for your friends. We also have the Cochise County Historical Society Journal. This tells the whole story of baseball in Cochise County from the very earliest game that was played here between the soldiers of the Sumner Baseball Club of Camp Bowie up in Apache Pass against the Never Sink Baseball Club of Camp Grant, now Fort Grant, in uh, uh, Southern Graham County down at the base of Mount Graham. And this tells the story also of one of best, um, the finest baseball players to come out of the minor leagues in the 1920s and 30s, Tony Antista. Um, and it's not politically correct, but his nickname in those days was the Wallop and Wop. And boy, could he hit. We call him Bisbee's Joe DiMaggio because he was the leading hitter in professional baseball in the year 1930, hitting a sizzling, broiling, red-hot 430 batting average. That's amazing. It is. And, and in this little town of Bisbee, Arizona, to have that kind of talent coming out of it. Ted Williams at 406. Yep, that and that year. was considered great. Yes, it really yeah. was. So it sounds like you, you have a combination of excitement, a lot of fun. And for those fans who are older, let me tell you, you go to the Warren Ballpark, it takes you back. Oh, yeah. It really takes you back. There's yeah. no Jumbotron. There's no plastic grass. There, nope. There's no uh, – uh, uh, the, the ball players aren't making millions of dollars. They're out there to, to have a good time and have a lot of fun. It's really uh, a tremendous experience. And to be able to sit down with a legend like Mudcat Grant, who started his professional baseball career about 1952, I think, not long after Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. He has some tremendous stories about that. Oh, yeah. And, and, and for, for people who think that when after Jackie um, did his thing in 1947, that it was all rainbows and ponies and peaches and creams for, uh, cream for African-American baseball players, and, uh, you're going to get your... Um, you're going you're gonna to learn it was quite different, that they still uh, had to deal with a tremendous amount of, of hostility and prejudice in certain parts of the country. And this, this is something we need to remember. Those guys played fantastic baseball, sometimes in front of crowds that would uh, do everything that they possibly could to make them feel unwelcome. That's correct, yeah. And especially Mudcat talks a lot about his experiences in spring training, which were either in Arizona or down in Florida. Right. So it really puts into perspective the, the tremendous amount of, uh, well, the biggest, the big change that came in effect with Jackie Robinson, but it never, it didn't seem to end until probably around, uh, I would say, the early 70s. Yeah. They were still going to, se to segregated motels in, in the South for spring right. training. This is true. And we, uh, we've had 
just to give you an idea, we, we've identified 16 Hall of Fame inductees who have managed, umpired, coached, or played at Warren Ballpark from 1913 when the first two teams, the Chicago White Sox and New York Giants, stopped there on their way around the world by steamship and passenger train a year after the Titanic sank. So from that time on until 1955, we had 16 Hall of Famers, including Connie Mack, Honus Wagner, the great John McGraw, and many, many others that appeared on the field there. We found 18 ball players who started in Bisbee, who had uh, more than just a cup of coffee and had respectable careers. We never had a superstar like Willie Mays or, or Joe DiMaggio or Ted Williams or Hank Aaron, but we had some great ball players in, that, that started their careers at Earl Wilson, 1953. Great pitcher for the Boston Red Sox and then a 22 game winner for the Detroit Tigers. Um, we had players such as the first Mexican born pitcher to make the big show was a fellow named Jesse Flores who started 1938 with the Bisbee Bees. Um, Sid Cohen, the, the last man to strike out Babe Ruth in Yankee pinstripes and the last man that Bambino hit a home run off of uh, in pinstripes during the same game at Griffith Park in Washington, your old stomping grounds. Yep. Um, he started his career in 1953 with the Bisbee Douglas Copper Kings. So we had a lot of great players that started there. Roy Partee, 1946 Boston Red Sox, one of the greatest teams of all time. Joe DiMaggio, Bobby Doerr, or not Joe DiMaggio, Dom DiMaggio, yeah. Bobby Doerr. Mm -hmm. um, you, you start um, just mentioning these names, and it's just like fantastic baseball players. They're, they, he played with them in the 1946 World Series. So. We could go on and on and on and on and on about about the number of great ball players that have appeared at that ballpark. Billy Martin in 1947 <laughs> um, was a player for the he was second baseman for the Phoenix Senators right. and and uh, he started his feud with Bisbee's um, catcher Clint Courtney that went on into the major leagues and caused a three-way fist fight at second base. I believe that was. Um, during a Browns, Browns game, a Browns Yankee game in Yankee Stadium, three-way fist fight between uh, Clint Courtney, Phil Rizzuto, and uh, and Billy Martin at second base. So, the the history and tradition in that old ballpark is is phenomenal. One other thing I'd like to mention is that um, we, the Friends of Warren Ballpark, are a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to supporting and maintaining this wonderful old ballpark that would have been torn down decades ago had the school district not purchased it from Phelps Dodge Corporation in 1936 for a grand sum of $10. The reason it still exists and hasn't been torn down to build a housing development or a shopping center is that the school district still uses it for football and baseball games for high school graduation and for any public outdoor venue uh, events in Bisbee that requires a large outdoor space. That's that's the one that's available. So we all know that these days that rural school districts in Arizona are cash strapped. They don't have enough money to, to even pay teachers a decent salary. So they sure don't have enough money to keep an aging 106 year old, 107 year old ballpark in good physical condition. So we've taken it upon ourselves to raise money in every way that we can to um, provide for the maintenance, the upkeep, renovation, and improvements to that ballpark that will not take away from its, its historical integrity. This year, our project was to build modern restrooms. So they're almost ready. We're hoping they'll be ready in time for the tournament um, in a week and a half. And uh, one thing I like to do when I do ballpark tours is to take people in to show them what the old plumbing looks like and to tell them this is where Honus Wagner and Connie Mack went to the restroom in, in, on April 2nd, 1940. And they see those original urinals and the original plumbing in there and people are quite shocked. They say, well, why haven't, hasn't it been replaced? Well, quite frankly, the school district doesn't have the money to, to, to be able to do that. We raised it uh, through a variety of sources, through selling this book for which all proceeds go to the Friends of Warren Ballpark. I don't make a dime off it. I donate my royalties and um, all the profits that go into this book to the Friends of Warren Ballpark. This journal, the purchase of which, uh, along with this, is a real bargain. All the proceeds go to Warren Ballpark. Our merchandise includes t-shirts, includes baseball shirts, includes 
Autographed baseballs includes baseball cards. So we have a lot of merch for sale. Mudcat's going to have his CD uh, for sale, his book, The Black Aces, photographs of him with Larry Doby and sat the Satchel Page, mm -hmm. uh, immortal Satchel Page. So all these things will be available for purchase. All the proceeds from Fred's of Warren Ballpark merchandise will go towards renovating, maintaining, and improving this grand lady of baseball and football. Wonderful. Now, your your foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit? It is. So there's an added advantage to giving, uh, donating money to us. We'll send you a tax letter with um, the uh, tax deduction um, code on it or number on it so that you can deduct that from your taxes when you have to settle up with the IRS in, in, during the future year. Mm -hmm. So our donations to the Friends of Ballpark are tax deductible. We are a 100% volunteer organization. We have no overhead. We have no paid professional um, staff. So every penny that goes to this ballpark, whether it's donations, whether it's uh, purchase of merchandise, whether it's admission fee, beer sales, hot dog sales, every penny goes back to that ballpark. We're very, very proud of that. Great. I will tell you, you need to go down there and have a ball, have a hot dog at the ballpark. Ah. Uh, there's, there's nothing better. It's all the all the major food groups. Draft beer, hot dogs, nachos, yeah. Cracker Jacks. We, we try to keep it old school and traditional. You're going to have an old school time if you go to Warren Ballpark on April 16th and 17th to the 7th Copper City Classic Vintage Baseball Tournament. This is old school fun for the entire family, and it's a real bargain, and it's, it's just... A wonderful way to spend a day. This is this is the way that you can best enjoy a weekend with family or even just by yourself. This is this is baseball as it used to be. And and still is in Bisbee, Arizona. It's a great way to reduce your blood pressure, reduce your cholesterol. Mike, thank you so much for bringing uh, this to our attention today. It, it's been a, it's a wonderful event. Not only will you have a chance to go to the nation's oldest baseball stadium and meet Mudcat Grant and watch baseball, and it is as it was originally. You'll also have a chance to visit Old Bisbee at the same time. It's a great, it'll be a great weekend. So thanks again, Mike, for thank, all you do. Yeah, thanks, Tom, and, and, and uh, thanks to all the folks at Fort Huachuca for doing what you do. Okay. <clears throat> so you're gonna, you're gonna edit that down to 30 seconds? <laughs>